So here is my next project, an X-Men six-player PCB. Everything checks out okay, but as you'll see in a second here, nothing happens. Um, you can see some jittering there, some graphics issues, looks like. Yeah, we'll just go to this green screen. What sucks is this was working perfectly when I put it away last year, and now it doesn't want to load up. So, the manual that comes with this game is here, X-Men six-player and it has an incomplete set of schematics and so for example none of these custom graphic chips are shown on the board uh... none of any of these custom chips are shown um, none of the audio circuitry the z80 and its rom those are not there basically just a small section over here is in the schematics now i do have a sixty eight thousand pod and a z80 pod so i could potentially desolder these hook up my fluke and maybe do some experimenting I don't know how far I'll, I'll get because as we saw on the screen um, you know it, it does check some I believe on the ROM and probably does some um, you know basic RAM checks and things like that which come out okay so I don't know if I'm gonna get too far with that um, so the only other thing I can do I mean with lack of proper schematics um, and that kinda of stuff I'm thinking the best way to do and I hate to do it but I don't really know what else to do is to just not really shotgun and not replace these parts randomly hoping to find one that's busted but go through one, them one at a time uh, most of this other stuff with the exception of the custom stuff is all TTL and so I have my TTL uh, data book here which shows me basically you know the, the pinout of a given device and then what it's supposed to do truth tables and kinda like a fundamental schematic for each one and so with my probe I could um, go through these and look for ones that are that are um, not working as expected and then check them off on my list here. This You can see here this is kind of a one for one uh, for the board there. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, rather than take the time to desolder, I hate to desolder these big guys, they're a pain. Um, and then throw my fluke on, I'm thinking I'm just going to go through one at a time. Try to figure out which one's wrong and uh, go from there. So we'll see, this is going to be an interesting fix I think. Well, interestingly enough, the second chip I checked, this guy here, which is a hex buffer, uh, it looks like it's bad. And that is 7404, which is basically, I don't know, my camera can't really focus in close, but it's basically six uh, buffers. And these are open collector buffers, which means they can pull a signal low, but they can't pull it high. So there's got to be a pull-up resistor on the board somewhere that's tied to the line or something. And um, one of the reasons that this is used is in case they want to have a bunch of these guys um, hooked up to each other. And so one of these could pull the line low. And if none of them are pulling it low, then the line would be high. And so basically what I'm looking for is a case where this chip is pulling uh, a line low on the input one of these guys and the output is not low remember this guy should always be able to pull something low but not necessarily high and so as I was probing this guy here on this side let me back up so you can see my thing here so that's power and then this is an input to one of the buffers it's low the output is high you can see it there and the very next guy input is low output is high input is low output is high so this guy is not working as expected and uh, I mean it's pennies to replace, it's a 74LS04, uh, I'm sorry, 07. And uh, I think I have a bunch, I mean I got a bag of stuff I gotta sort through this and I got trays full of TTL so hopefully I can find a replacement. So I'll start with that, basically I'm just going through my list here and checking them off as I go once that I've tested and whatnot. but second one checked and there's already a problem there so hopefully just by you know farting around with the probe here I can bring this guy back to life. So I have the board on the rework bench here, you can see, and um, basically what I do to pull a chip off is I don't try to save the the part, I mean, I'm assuming I'm replacing it because it's bad, and so there's no sense in trying to preserve it, and they're really pennies, I mean, to get uh, a replacement, so there's no sense in, you know, I don't know, there's no sense in trying to preserve this guy if you think it's bad, this one over here actually. So what I'll do is I'll get a pair of um, some snips have a real nice tight edge to them and I can get in there and basically I'll just snip all the leads off and rip this chip right off and then basically what I'll be left with 
are just the leads going through the, the board. And then what I'll do is I'll flip the guy up like this, and you can see my vise over here. I'll slide it into my vise so that I can have access to both sides of the board. And then with one side of the board, I will use a pair of tweezers to grab onto the, to the um, exposed pins. And then on the other side, I'll just use a, a soldering iron. It's nothing fancy, just a normal soldering iron that I have there. And so I'll heat it up from one side, and with my um, tweezers on the other side, I can pull all the pins out. And then once I get that far, I'll grab a uh, solder sucker. Again, nothing fancy, just a solder, solder pult, I think they call it, that I have. And I'll do the same thing. I'll have the solder pult on one side, you know, over here on the left, and on the other side, I'll just touch it with my soldering iron and uh, clean the holes out. I did manage to find this guy in a pile of uh, stuff people were throwing away and it was busted and I repaired it. So this is a, an Unger 4024. Actually, I've never used this before. Um, I'm going to try it today. And it's an automated um, solder sucker. So it's got the soldering iron. It's all heated up and then it's got a button here and, and it's, uh, it's got suction to it. So if you, if you fire it up, man, that's loud. <laughs> it'll, it'll do that job of the sucking for you. So hopefully that'll save even more time as I pull this guy out. So anyway, I'm just going to rip this guy off and then, again, I'm going to replace it with an uh, 8-pin uh, socket. That way, if for whatever reason, the one I throw in there is also, um, you know, not working properly, then uh, I can just, you know, keep throwing one in there until, until I find one that works. So, always a good idea. Throw a socket in there. Don't, don't solder the chip back onto the board. For whatever reason, the 7407s on this board are horrible. I replaced four so far. I'm um, just keeping a list of ones that I'm marking bad as I find them here. And um, I think my screen now is, instead of all green with some flickering color, it's actually showing up the way it should show up. There we go. Um, and a lot of these were in the color drivers up there. So I've gotten that far, but it still goes to a blank screen, but I'm getting there. And I found a couple of these ICs. There's floating signals and other weird stuff going on, so I'm about to trace those next. but. We're making some headway. Okay, some more interesting uh, stuff here. There's all this memory. There's like, uh, looks like about six chips here. Those are actually uh, these guys here. Uh, there's a few more that are, I think, down here perhaps. Um, so there's probably nine total. And uh, what I'm seeing is these last guys here that latch the data from this memory. Um, there's a ton of pins on here that are floating including the clock, which is definitely a sign that something's wrong. And those are these guys right here. So if you see my probe here, as I probe, notice the color doesn't change at all. Here's ground. And nothing. I mean, some of these pins, I think, are getting high, which are like the outputs. But the, uh, the D pins, which is the input to the latch, most of them are just stuck. Yeah, they're well, not, not stuck, rather, they're floating. You're not getting any high or low signal at all. That one's one. That's another one right there. And of course the clock. And so they're basically just, it's like an open circuit. They're just, they're not allowing any of the data to pass through to the rest of the logic. And uh, the bigger problem is this guy talks to, or it references rather a schematic sheet 606E, which doesn't even exist. Like I said, this is an incomplete set of schematics. So I have no clue where that guy goes. So my only, um, the only way to tackle this is to basically shut the thing off, grab my own meter here, and um, just hold one pin there and just start brushing chips and see if I can figure out where the clock comes from. And I assume that um, there's probably a buffer that's buffering not only the clock, but some other signals too um, that may be uh, also turned off, which which you know is causing even more problems. So no clock, no nothing. So we've got to tackle that first and then hopefully uh, move on to the next step. Okay, I think I found it. This guy here, 74LS74, which according to my book here, is a non tri statable latch. And the output of this latch is connected to, oops, sorry, is connected to uh, the clock. So this latch actually generates the clock, probably from a faster clock. So they're probably using it as like a divide by two. Um, but anyway, there's no way that the output of this guy should be uh, floating or tri stated. Um, so it's definitely this guy. So I'm going to pull him out and see if I get my clock back. Alright, got my new 74 LS74 in there, my latch. 
and um, let's take a look here. Cool. I don't see the the. I used to see like glitching going through there, through the letters. I mean, it was clear, but there was stuff going through. And so let's see here how long this takes. Sweet. Look at that. Let me turn the volume down here. So this is a six-player board, so I can only see half of the screen. But I'm um, assuming the other half is working fine. So that's a good uh, observation. Normally I use the fluke, you know, and I throw on the, the pod and I try to troubleshoot the RAM and the ROM. But let's say you're starting off in board repair and you don't have the means or just don't have the equipment. Um, I mean, I literally just got by with a um, set of schematics and even not even a full set of schematics at that. I mean, let's say I didn't have any schematics at all. You could still troubleshoot this board. It'd be tedious, but you could still do it. You'd have to go through every single um, TTL part, take a look at how it works in your book. And if you go to my website, onecircuit.com, you'll find that I have an online version of this book, the TTL data book. And you'll be able to find out basically what each chip does. And then using a logic probe, you can just go through each chip one at a time and see if it makes sense given what's what's in this book so and that's pretty much what I did I didn't have a complete set of schematics um, and didn't have a means to I mean I really didn't want to unsolder these guys and um, throw a throw my pot on there so basically I was just limited to my you know thirty dollar logic probe and a book that's free so yeah for those of you starting off you know that's that's a good way to go and yeah, I'm psyched. This is awesome. I've been waiting so long to get this board working, so very cool. And I just got to bring it upstairs, throw it in the cab, and clean it all up and get it going. So there you go.